hi and welcome to my channel my name is Francisca and in today's video I will be showing you how to attach crinoline to a flare or to a peplum without lining if you look at most kids um, dresses it's either organza fabric that is used to make the ball effect or a net fabric and you will notice that there are lots of pleats or gathers at the waist area to give you know that ball effect now you can either cut your fabric in a peplum or flare shape or you can you know cut your fabric you know straight and gather the waist area when you are attaching crinoline to a straight fabric that is the easiest thing that you can do as in, it is very very simple so if you don't want any stress you can cut your fabric straight and then attach your crinoline but attaching crinoline to a flare fabric without lining it can be a little tricky so if you don't know what to do you may find it difficult to you know achieve so in this tutorial i'll be showing you my tips and my tricks that i use to you know ensure that my crinoline lays nicely on the fabric if you are new here welcome to my channel please click the subscribe button and click the bell so you get updates when i post new videos and now let's get right into the tutorial I have cut out my flare and this is what I have. What I'm working with is a 360 degree flare for this tutorial. So I advise that whenever you're making flare or peplum, either for an adult or for a child, make sure you have allowance for pleats at the waistline. If you do that, it's going to give your peplum or your flare a lot of fullness at the bottom of the flare. And by the time you now attach your horse hair braid to it or your crinoline to it, it's going to give it an extra fullness. That's why I advise that whenever you're making peplum, just make sure you add pleat allowance at the waistline. It's going to make a whole lot of difference on your flare. It's also not easy to cut organza to have you know, the, a perfect shape at the bottom, but that's okay. I've cut it. This is what I have. If you don't know how to cut a 360 degree flare, I'm going to link that up in my description box. You can go ahead and watch that. So, what I'll be doing now is attaching crinoline to this. So, I'm going to take this to my sewing machine now and attach my crinoline to it. This is what crinoline looks like. It is called horse hair braid as well. And what I have here is measuring about 3 inches that's what i have right here so i'll take this to my sewing machine now and show you how i fix this up so what i've done for this crinoline that you can see here i've concealed the raw edge with a bias tape if you don't do this and you're making a dress for a child in fact whether it's a child or an adult if you don't do this the crinoline is going to you know make the person uncomfortable because it has sharp edges when you cut so what you want to do is place the crinoline in the middle of the bias tape like this can you see what i'm doing use this other edge to cover it can you see use the other edge to cover it like so and then take it to your sewing machine and stitch throughout the width of the crinoline so that's what i've done for the crinoline i'll be using in this tutorial i've already gone ahead to conceal the raw edge with a bias tape i'm going to be attaching my crinoline to the organza fabric so i'm going to place it like this and i'll be sewing with a half an inch seam allowance when you're sewing crinoline please ensure that you do not stretch the crinoline if you do that you may put the crinoline out of shape and you will not get the desired result so i'm going to start stitching i just place it gently apply no tension at all and then we're going to start stitching when i get towards the end like as you can see i'm almost there when i get to this point what i'm going to do is cut the crinoline so that it sort of like rests on this bias tape we have underneath so i'm just going to cut it like this and what i'm going to do now is to conceal this raw edge right here 
before going ahead to finish this up once i've successfully concealed the raw edge right here i'll just go ahead and finish sewing the crinoline to the flare ensuring that it sort of like overlaps the one under so i'll just go ahead and finish that up so once i'm done stitching this down i'll go ahead and stitch the crinoline on top of each other we don't want the crinoline to be separating like this so i'm just going to go ahead and seal this up In order to ensure that your crinoline lays nicely on your fabric, this is our seam allowance where we attach the crinoline to the organza fabric. This is what we have here. So I'm going to push that seam allowance to be leaning towards my crinoline and then I'm going to do a stitch very, very close to our initial seam. Do you understand? We don't want it to be so obvious that we are making the second stitch. That is why I am stitching very, very close to our initial seam. So just go ahead and do that all around your fabric. So after top stitching, the next thing is to ensure that our crinoline lays down, right? So what I'll be doing right now is to use a hemming tape. Because the circumference of this crinoline at this part does not match the peplum or the flare, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to sew. This is my hemming tape right inside. I've already glued some parts right here. So what I'm going to do now is to place the crinoline like this. You can see that I have like this raised edge here. So just watch what I'm doing. I ensure that the hemming tape is right at the edge where the crinoline is. So by the time I bend it like this, I'm going to have some ruffles here, right? Ensure that your pressing iron is not too hot. And then what you're going to do is place your pressing iron right at this edge. If your pressing iron is too hot, it's going to melt away your crinoline. So I'll just go ahead now and just place it on top like this. Do not try and rub your iron. If you rub your iron, it will spread out your crinoline at the top here and you will not like it. So just go ahead and just place your iron on top of it, ensuring that your iron is not too hot. Do you understand? So it's already glowing. Just allow the heat to do the work. So this is what I'm going to do all through this crinoline. I'm going to place it like this. I have this ruffled edge here. Can you see that? Then I'll place my iron on top. Ensure that the iron is not too hot. It will bend my crinoline to shape to match this part of the peplum. The hemming gum that we are adding under this is to help to, you know, glue the crinoline to the fabric so you just see that by the time i place my pressing iron on it and wait for a while and lift it up the crinoline would have bent to the shape of the fabric can you see this so the heat is also assisting with that but make sure that your um iron is not too hot because if it's too hot it's going to melt away your crinoline I hope that explains this part. So, in order for me to properly press this for the hemming tape to disappear, I'm sure you can see the hemming tape like this. What I'm going to do is turn my fabric like this. Then I'll place another fabric on top because I don't want this to get burnt. I'll place another fabric on top like this. And then I can, now I can increase the heat of the iron such that it will not burn my fabric underneath but it's going to melt away the hemming gum totally so i'll just go ahead and do that 
So after all said and done, what I did at this point that we attached the hemming gum was to reinforce this place with a stitch should in case after a couple of washes the hemming gum disappear. So I reinforced it with a stitch all around and this is what we have. So by the time you make this and you attach to a dress and you gather the top, you are going to have a lot more fold than what we have here. If you want to attach crinoline to a straight fabric, it is actually much more easier, very very easy because you don't have to deal with having more crinoline than fabric at this point here to stitch. In fact, if you are even working with a straight fabric, you may not need to use hemming gum. I hope that makes sense. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and click the bell so you get updates when we post new videos and I'm going to be seeing you in my next video. Bye.